I believe that Arlington National Cemetery. Have you been? If you haven't, go. If you've been, go twice. Go again. I believe that Arlington National Cemetery contains 400,000 reasons why you should stand your ass up for the national anthem. Among the crosses of Arlington and those that gave their lives across our land, we carry the torch of liberty into battle once again. Now, patriots among us, standing for love and for freedom, we rise to defend our nation's heart, sounding the trumpets of salvation as they roll upon America's streets, protecting the rights of our children and caring for the weak. Now, patriots among us are prepared to die to preserve the spirit of hope and to keep the flame of truth alive and to allow your voice to always be spoken. Vote. And I just want to thank you for standing. I thank you for standing for the U.S. of A and the freedom she stands for. I took an oath to flag. I would defend. Hello, everybody. This is Dennis Aloya, the godfather of American Hearts Radio and Television Network. And uh, as you may remember or may not remember, I'll refresh your memories. I had a show for six years, an interview show on American Hearts Radio called Keeping It Real. This is my comeback. I am here with a brand new show. And not only that, I'm here with someone else that's going to share the show with me. This is Mr. Hal Burke sitting to my left. Hal, you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. That's glad it. to be here. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, Hal and I go back a long way. In fact, longer than we want to admit, but uh, we met in the Navy. You remember that, Hal? Oh, yeah, 1963. Yep. And uh, we hit it off pretty well. And believe it or not, we've been friends ever since. And uh, uh, we served on the same ship together, the USS Pritchett, DD-561. Uh, and uh, had a great time. Long and Beach, we, California. Long Beach, California, yeah. And what was your The most, Pike. The, the Pike. The Pike. Yes. The Pike, folks, was a amusement park in Long Beach that they blew up for a movie starring John Belushi. And the movie was called... 1941. 1941. One of the most hilarious movies I've ever seen. And in fact, it was Steve Spielberg's first movie. Did you yes. know that, Hal? Yes, a little trivia. Yes, a little, a little trivia. trivia. Great movie. What was your... Fun? Especially when Belushi said, and we're going to go after those Germans for bombing Pearl Harbor. <laughs> that was that was classic. <laughs> well, listen, we got the same sense of humor, yep. and I think that's one of the big reasons that we, we've remained Tolerate friends. one another yeah, all tolerate these years. Tolerate one another yes, all these years. Exactly. But we came up with the concept of, uh, of doing a show together because we're both veterans, and uh, how Navy veterans, Navy United Navy States veterans. Navy veterans, yes. very important Navy to mention veterans. that. And Hal has been on a mission uh, with his company to bring veteran stories out to groups of folks, especially young people, all ages really, that tell the stories of veterans and their valor. And um, this is going to be a show kind of tied in with that message. The name of our new show is going to be. Patriots Among Us, and we hope to interview patriots on every show from every branch of the military. And Hal, I want you to talk about a little bit about what you've done um, since you moved down here to Georgia with regard to your own business uh, that you have, Victory, Valor, and Memories. Well, this mission started, uh, as you know, when you interviewed me on one of your programs back in 2018. And I gave a presentation about the historical connection between the five Sullivan brothers and the iconic photograph of the kissing sailor, uh, VJ Day in New York City, Times Square. Right. Um, I had the honor, after you and I served on the Pritchett in 1963, in 1964, I had the honor of serving aboard the USS the Sullivan's the destroyer that was named for the five Sullivan brothers that were killed during the Battle of uh, Guadalcanal uh, on 13 November 1942. Uh, they were aboard the ship, the Juno, and the Sullivan's was named for them uh, in honor of them. 
And little did I know, fast forward to 2011, when I attended my first Sullivan's Association reunion in Waterloo, Iowa, that I was told that the sailor in the iconic photograph, the kissing sailor, uh, kissing the nurse, was actually a man named George Mondanza, who was a commercial fisherman who lived in Newport, Rhode Island, and a book was written about him. And my uh, journey was to meet him, which I did, and visit with him for six years. And I've been doing a presentation talking about that historical connection since. And you were gracious to have me on your show. And that really snowballed into what we're doing today. Well, I know that since that experience, you've done your presentation and other presentations. I think you have about 10 or 11 of them right now at high schools, uh, senior communities, veteran uh, meeting events, just all kinds of venues. And um, over the last over the last I've been honored and blessed over the last five years, I've probably presented the story to over 40,000 people. Wow. And uh, one class, one high school in Downers Grove, Illinois, Downers Grove North, uh, there were 2,900 students, veterans, administrators. And what made it so, uh, I was honored because after my presentation, I had a line of students and teachers and veterans, but the students said, thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah. And the teacher said it, and I knew then that I was on uh, a right track in my yeah, mission. Definitely. Well, uh, <clears throat> we have talked about doing a show together focused on the veteran community and the interviews that we'd like to do with the veterans. What do you want to bring out of these interviews that, you know, we could maybe share with a younger generation because we need some patriotic uh, teachings in school today. I think that that is missing in a big way. What do you think about that? Well, I couldn't agree more. I believe that our history is not being taught as it should be. And my parents were the greatest generation as yours were and the sacrifices that they made over the years. uh, They're not talked about. And the freedoms and the liberty that we enjoy today was a direct result of America ridding the world of tyranny with our allies. And unfortunately, history repeats itself. It's forgotten. And we can see that happening today with the Russia invading the Ukraine and the people there being (laughs) slaughtered because of a uh, a, a tyranny. I'm a student of history, and this is 1939 all over again with Hitler running over uh, Europe and the start of World War II. Hopefully, we don't get to that point. But aside from the World War II generation, uh, since we have joined some veteran organizations, I've met uh, a lot of fellows that served in Vietnam, as you have. Yes. And I not only want to tell their stories, but I want to also tap into the fellows that served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and the most recent Operation Freedom. Operation Freedom. Because every one of those guys that served, whether land, sea, air, under the sea, they're all patriots. And I I firmly and and, uh, just passionately believe that these patriots among us have to have their stories told so that the legacy continues and the younger generation can see what the price of freedom is and what kind of a person puts their life on the line when they sign that paper to sign up as a member of the military. Well, and you you hit on a very important point because when I gave my presentation at Riverside Brookfield High School, to about 1,800 students, something made me kind of relate to the students. I said, how many of you have a family member serving in the military today? And several hands went up out of these 1,800 students. And then I said, how many of your parents, grandparents had served our veterans? More hands went up. And do you know somebody today that's serving in, in the military? Yes. And I said, that's the common thread that runs between all of exactly. us is that we there is a connection and there is this quest for freedom to preserve what we have. Freedom is not free. And <laughs> the common thread me, of yes, service yes. transcends the generation. Exactly. And it's really important that we bring the veterans that served, like you said, in the Gulf Wars into this community of veterans from Vietnam because the veterans from Vietnam 
nobody said thank you. As a matter right. of fact, it was a horrible period of time when these men came back. You and I had a different period. We were in the Cold War, so to speak. Right. We weren't in Vietnam, but we were right on the edge of it. And uh, we know what those veterans went through. And, and I sympathize with them because I felt that the country was on the wrong course in the way they treated these veterans. We want, and the groups that we belong to now is comprised mostly of Vietnam veterans, but we see what they did for this country. We recognize and want to honor and respect the things that they have done. Well, no matter what area you served in, <clears throat> you, all, you always have your challenges. You know, we served in the Cold War, the war from 1960 to 66, and I personally served during the Cuban Missile Crisis. I was on active duty in the Navy at that time. And we all literally were uh, resigned to the fact that we were going to have nuclear war and uh, within days. It, but you know what? I don't remember anybody jumping off the ship and running home. No. I don't remember anybody protesting. No. I don't remember anybody doing anything except the mission they were trained to do. And I had friends that were on destroyers that were in Cuban waters that forced Russian submarines to surface. And uh, we, we were on the edge, like you said. Well, and, uh, yeah. you know, you remember that time? Well, I was well. in 61 to 67. And, uh, I, you know, I look back at that time and it was the right thing for me to do. Right. To get away from home, which was a good home, but I needed to have my own independence. And that was the best decision I ever made was to go into the military and find my own way. Right. And I thank my time in the Navy. Yes, there were bad times, but there were many cherished memories. There's, there's an old saying, you only remember the good times. Exactly. And that's a fact. Exactly. I got to travel the world as an 18-year-old, and I never could have afforded to go to these places. And, you know, it's been a blessing, and it stayed with me my entire life, and it, it enabled me to become a veteran and be part of a bigger community of uh, a band of brothers. And that's the, really. that's the story we want to share. And we want to honor those that are still alive from World War II. There were 16 million that served, and today there's less than 300,000. Right. So we want to honor those men and women and the families that served during World War II. Well, I think we're uh, on a great mission, and I think that our, our show is going to be a success in a lot of ways. It's going to give us self-fulfillment. It's going to tell the story to the younger generation and all generations about patriots among us. So, folks, I want you to look forward to watching this show, and uh, we'll have another uh, a little bit of information for you coming up as to the time and the date. But this is kind of an introductory little video about our show forthcoming. Thank you for your time, and Hal. And I want to thank everyone for watching, and uh, we hope that you'll contribute to the program by recommending people that you know. There are so many stories out there. As we give presentations, we hear stories about you know women that served in the military under the WASP program. Right. So there's a lot of stories out there, and we want to make them known so that the younger generation has that history. And thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to take a, a little... Uh, Pass now. Bye, everybody. See you soon. I took an oath to flag. I would defend.